Hi, I'm Timo Harbo, and I run the course Python for Structural Engineers. In this video, I'm going to show you an example that you may know from your own work. If you're a structural engineer and you have been doing a bit of foundation design, you will very likely have encountered situations where you receive some information from a geotechnical engineer that you need to implement into your finite element model. This often means that you need to do quite a lot of manual copy-pasting, which is both slow to do and it's also really error prone. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can approach that problem using Python. The intention of the video is not to go through it all in detail, but more to simply show you what is actually possible to do. Most finite element software allows you to export your finite element model as a text file. And that's what I've done for an ETAPS model here. And what we want to do is to make some changes to this text file so we can get in the information from the geotechnical engineer. So you will most likely receive a table from your geotechnical engineer with some pile numbers and some corresponding pile stiffnesses. Now you may get this in Excel. I've just written it in here for simplicity as an example. So the first thing we do is to take this information and convert it to a spreadsheet using pandas for Python. So now we have a nice spreadsheet with all the pile numbers and the corresponding pile stiffnesses. We then find the text file we're looking for and we load it in. So now what you will notice if you go through this text file here, you will see that we have these headers here. So every part of the file is under a header. So you can see if we search for spring properties, we get down to this header here under which we have all the point spring properties. So that knowledge is something we will use actively. So the first thing we want to do is to split our ETAPS file into different blocks so we can kind of easily look through these headers. So you can pause the video here and go through the code if you want. But what I really want to show you is that now we have a dictionary that contains all the information of the ETAPS model. And that makes it quite easy for us to pinpoint the part of the file that we want to do edits to. So in this case here, I can quickly have a look at the point spring properties. I can also quickly have a look at the point assigns and I can go in and edit these sections as I want. So now the first thing we want to do is to take this point spring properties section where we just have this one spring type right now and we want to add all the spring types that we have gotten from the geotechnical engineer. And the naming convention we will use is to simply just call each spring, spring type, underscore and then the number of the node that it's assigned to. And then we, of course, need to change the spring stiffness as well. So we can now loop through the information we got from the geotechnical engineer, which we have in this pile stiffnesses data frame. So we find the pile number and we find the corresponding pile stiffness. And for each set of values, we create a new piece of text here, a new string in the format that ETAPS expects. So let's see what it looks like when we run this code. So you can see we now have a list with all the new spring types. So now we can loop through every single line of the pointer signs in the ETAPS text file. And then we say that if it's a point at base level, and if the point number is also one that was in the information we got from the geotechnical engineer, then we write a new point assign value. So in that case, we say point assign, point number, and then we assign this spring type to it. And this text format here is like ETAPS would expect it. You can even see a few examples in here where we have that exact format. So we have basically just copied this line out and modified it a little bit. So now we have edited our point assigns and we are now ready to overwrite the point assigns block. So now we run this code here and now we're ready to stitch it all back together. So we create an empty list for all the new content and then we loop through our blocks dictionary. So first we add all the headers and then afterwards we add all the content that we have now just updated. And then we don't want to override our existing file. So we generate a new file path here and then we write all the content here to this file. So we run this code here and we run this code here. And now if you go in to your home folder here, you can see that we have the new E2K file here. And if we scroll down a little bit, you can see that we have our new spring types and you can also see that we have our new pointer signs here. So now this example here was of course quite simple with just a few springs and it could have been maybe quite easy to do manually. 
But if you imagine an iterative process where you have to do this on a weekly basis, maybe you also have to do a sensitivity analysis where you want to create parallel FE models with plus minus 10% spring stiffness, then suddenly this workflow here becomes a lot faster. And also you avoid the situation where you accidentally mistype something in or copy something wrong. So if your script is robust, you're guaranteed that your result will always be correct. In my course, Python for Structural Engineers, we're gonna go through this example here in a lot more detail, and we'll go through all the things you need to know to be able to do this on your own. So thanks a lot for watching, and I'm looking forward to share more with you.